Join Kids Hat Family. Hey Tofu, what's going on? I saw some older boys spray paint on one of the walls in school. The school would not be happy about that. Did you tell the principal? No, but I want to. But I am afraid. Don't worry. With a little bit of courage, we can do everything. A very strong and brave man named Hercules lived in Greece hundreds of years ago. He was loved by the people of Greece so much that the king was afraid that people would want him as the king. I must get rid of Hercules, otherwise people will make him the king. I will set him upon such difficult tasks that he would never return. The first one I am going to send him on is find me three golden apples. He summoned Hercules. What can I do for you? Hercules, I want you to get me three golden apples from the trees in Hesperides. Yes, my king. I will set off on the journey right away. As he went on his journey, he met three maidens. Can you please tell me the way to Hesperides? You should ask the old man of the sea. But when you meet him, hold him tight. He can easily escape. Once he does, you won't be able to find him because no one knows where he lives. Hercules thanked the maidens and made his way to the seashore. There, he saw the old man sleeping. He instantly jumped on him and held him tightly. Who are you? What do you want? I am Hercules. Tell me the way to Hesperides. The old man immediately tried to escape. He turned himself into a stag, then into a seabird and every other animal form possible to escape from Hercules' grip. But he couldn't. It is an island in the middle of the sea. Keep walking along the seashore till you meet a giant. Ask him and he will show you the way to the island Hesperides. Hercules started walking along the seashore and just as the old man had said, came upon a huge and strong giant. He was sleeping. Hercules woke him up. But the giant was very angry. Who are you? And how dare you wake me up from my sleep? Angry, the giant struck Hercules with a club. But Hercules was strong. He attacked the giant. He lifted the giant and threw him down. The giant attacked Hercules back, becoming stronger every time Hercules threw him down. Hercules now lifted him in the air and kept him there. This made the giant slowly lose all his strength. Afraid, the giant pleaded with Hercules to put him down on the ground. Tell me the way to Hesperides. Go meet the Atlas. I will tell you where he is. Hercules went on his journey again. and met Atlas. He was holding the sky on his shoulders. Why do you want the golden apples? It is my king's order to bring him three golden apples from Hesperides. 
His parodies is very far from here and only I can go there. I shall get them for you if you hold this sky for me. Hercules agreed and took the burden of the sky on his shoulders as Atlas walked away. He returned after some time with three gold apples and put them at Hercules' feet. Thank you. Can you please take back the sky now? Take back the sky? Not so soon. I have held it for a thousand years. Now you hold it for the next thousand years. I will take it back from you after that. Hercules was shocked to hear that, but he calmly asked Atlas for some more help. Okay, I can do that, but let me make it a bit more comfortable for me. Just hold it till I adjust my shoulder pads. Yes, I can do that. Give it to me. As soon as Atlas took the sky from Hercules, he picked up the three golden apples. Thank you. His task done, Hercules made his way back to Greece and gave the three golden apples to the king. The king was surprised to see that Hercules had succeeded. But he pretended to be happy and gave him a reward. That must have been so scary. Yes, but with courage and bravery, he got through. Okay, I will also go to the principal tomorrow. Good, and don't worry, I'll wait outside his office while you talk to him. Thanks, Tia. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion, which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those Rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. And started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night, there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. How dare you, you men! Come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh, if that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants, but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. 
The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you. Ha 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 ha! The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs, but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, la, la, la. a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. La, la, la. Oh! What a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's songs. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh, who are you? Oh Lord, you are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh, Prince, 
I am ready to go away with you, but I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes. Don't worry, Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh, so he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this! The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince and he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! Tia? You? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. Oh, Tia. Everything is so pretty in this shop. Yes, Tofu, it is. Oh, look, that chair is so beautiful. Tia, look at that pencil. It's so gorgeous. Can I buy it, please? But it's just an antique pencil. Are you sure you want to buy that? Yes, Tia. I would love to have it. Alright, boy. 
we're buying that pencil for you. The Magic Pencil Who would have made this pencil? It looks so beautiful and unique. It is precious tofu. I would suggest you either use it carefully or not use it at all. Keep it as a treasure. I will keep that in mind, dear. Good night. Good night, tofu. Sweet dreams. This pencil is so pretty. Hmm. Let's draw a leaf. Wow, it's so smooth to draw. It doesn't even take much efforts to use. I will show my drawing to Tia in the morning. Morning Tofu, wake up. Good morning, Tia. You know, last night, I made a drawing using my new pencil. I will show it to you. Really? Let me see. Hmm, I did draw a leaf yesterday. But what is this? Where is my drawing? Well, are you sure you made a leaf? Or just kept it in the notebook. Looks like someone was really tired and sleepy yesterday, huh? Oh no, Tia. I really made a leaf. I just can't find the page. Alright, buddy. We will see your drawing later. Come for breakfast now. Uh, where is my drawing? Okay, let me make another one. Oh my God! I don't believe this! Is this a magic pencil? Uh, let's draw an apple and check. Tia! Tia! This is a magic pencil. I drew an apple and a leaf and they both came to life. Tofu, don't make me mad early in the morning. What are you even talking about? Tell me to draw something. Come on. Okay. Draw a cake. You just saw that? It's a magic pencil. I told you. Oh God. I really can't believe it. A magic pencil? But Tofu, you must not put it to use in a wrong way. Yes, Tia. I will make sure of that. I am so excited. Tofu, I have an idea. Instead of wasting the use of this magic pencil like that, why don't we share our treasure with the needy? What do you mean, Tia? Let's help the needy around us by drawing useful things and giving it to them. They would be so happy. Yes, Tia, let's do this. Thank you. I always wanted a pretty dress. Oh my child, thank you for the food. My kids would be so happy today. God bless you both. You are very kind. Tia, I feel so happy seeing them smile. That's true happiness, Tofu. I'm glad you didn't misuse your powers. I think we must return it to the antique store now. I don't want us to be greedy. You are right, Tia. We must return it now. We help people, but now someone else should have it. Someone who is in need of the powers. Wow, Tofu, when did you grow up to be so smart? I, I think you taught me, Tia. 
Oh, come on. Let's grab an ice cream. Yay! An ice cream. Tofu, what are you doing? Uh, cleaning. No, you're not. You're just piling up the glasses and making a tower out of them. Uh, okay. I don't understand why we must do all the cleaning. Oh dear, stop being so lazy, Tofu. I am not being lazy. I just think that it is not my job to be cleaning. I don't want to get dirty again. You know, you sound like the lazy girl. The who? Once upon a time, there lived an old couple. They had two daughters, one each from their previous marriages. But the woman behaved terribly with her husband's daughter. One day, she threw her out of the house. Get out of this house! Go find a wealthy man and find some work in his house. Don't come back till you have earned some money. And so the girl took off. As she walked, she came upon an old dried tree. Girl, where are you going? I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. Okay, but before you go, can you please take off the dry twigs from me? The girl agreed and spent a long time carefully cleaning the tree of its dried sticks and twigs. Once she was done, she continued her journey. As she walked on, she came upon a vineyard. An old wine called out to her. Girl, where are you going? Can you help me? I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. But yes, I surely can help you before I go. She carefully cleaned the vineyard and helped the old vine. Once she was done, she continued her journey. As she walked on, she saw a broken mud oven. Young girl, what are you doing here? I am on my way for work and earn some money. Before you go, will you help me? The girl agreed and set to work. She cleaned the area around the oven, got some mud ready and fixed the oven as good as new. As she did that, she got mud and dirt all over her, but she didn't mind. Once she was done, she set on her way. As 
as she walked she came upon an old well the well called out to her hello girl where are you going i am going in search for work work is it okay before you go can you please take out my water and clean me up the girl happily agreed She tirelessly emptied the well and cleaned it. Once she was done, she went back on the road. As she walked, a dirty little dog approached her. Help! Can you please help me? I am very dirty. Will you give me a bath, please? Yes, why not? The girl washed the dog and patiently cut its hair. Then She went ahead in search of work. As she walked, she came upon a beautiful house. It belonged to the fairies. She went inside. I need a place to stay for the night. Can I please stay here? I will leave in the morning. Where are you going? I am going in search of work. If you want to work, then you can work here for a year. You can keep our house clean. It has 7 rooms. You will have to clean 6 of them, but you must never enter the 7th one. The girl agreed. For a whole year she worked in the fairy's home and did exactly as they told. At the end of the year She wanted to go home. I want to go back to my village to my parents' house. Okay, but first follow me. She took her to a room full of silver and gold coins. You should sleep here on these silver and gold coins. The coins that get stuck on you will belong to you and you can take them with you. The girl did as told. She spent the night sleeping over the coins. Many gold and silver coins got stuck to her body. When morning came, she said her goodbyes and left for her home. As she was walking, the little dog that she had helped came to her. Come on with me. Come, come with me. The girl went with it. The dog took her to a place with piles of diamonds and pearls. Take as much as you want. 
The girl took as much as she wanted and left. As she walked, she reached the well that she had cleaned. Come girl, you must be thirsty. Have some of my water. Uh, thank you very much. I am very thirsty. The girl satisfied her thirst and walked on. She reached the mud oven that she had fixed. She saw many delicious foods there. The oven offered her to eat whatever she wanted. She ate some and packed some for the rest of her journey. She walked on ahead. Then she reached the vineyard. Dear girl, come have some wine. The girl drank some delicious wine. And walked on towards her home. She now came upon the tree. It was full of delicious fruits. Hello again, dear girl. Here, you can take as much fruit as you want. The girl ate some delicious fruits and packed some to take home with her. Then she got on her way again. Soon she reached home. The house rooster saw her coming and called out. The mistress is home. Look how much golden gems she's brought with her. This made the mother very angry. What nonsense. This is nothing. Now wait and see how much my daughter will earn. The mother now sent her own daughter to find work and earn a lot of money. The girl started her journey and soon came upon the tree which was once again dry. Girl, where are you going? I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. Okay, but before you go, can you please take off the dried twigs from me? No, I don't want to spoil my soft pretty hands. Picking the dry sticks of you? The girl walked on and came upon the vineyard. The old wine called out to her. Girl, where are you going? Can you help me? I have to go find work and earn money. I have no time to help you. The girl once again went on her way till she came upon the broken mud oven. Dear girl, can you please help me? I don't want to get dirty in the mud. I can't help you. And again, the girl refused to help and moved on. She now approached the well. I need help. Can you please clean me? I have to go and find work. Cleaning you will tire me and I don't want to get tired. The girl hurried away from the well. As she did so, the little dirty dog approached her. I've become so dirty. Can you please give me a bath and do something about my hair, please? Ah, no. 
If I touch you, I will become dirty. Look at those dirty flies in your hair. And so the girl ignored the dog's plea and went on her way. After some time, she came upon the fairy's house. She went in. I need a place to stay for the night. Can I stay here? Where are you going? I am going in search of work. If you want, you can work here for a year. There are seven rooms in this house. You will have to clean six of them. And you must never, never enter the seventh room. The girl agreed and started working for the fairies. For a few days, she did as told. But one day, she decided to sneak into the seventh room. The room was dark. But she went in anyway. As soon as she entered it, the door closed behind her. And bugs and insects of a variety attacked and bit her everywhere. She ran out of the room hurt and bleeding. I told you never to enter the seventh room. I will not stay here another moment. I am leaving. The girl took to the road running. Her head dirty, hands, legs and face bleeding and bruised. She came upon the little dog and asked for help. Please help me. You never helped me. Why should I help you now? The dog barked at her and chased her away. She ran till she reached the old well. She was thirsty with all the running. She quickly tried to reach in for a cup of water. But the well took away all its waters. When I asked you for help, you refused. I cannot help you now. Go away. Disappointed, the girl went back on the road. She kept walking on till she saw the mud oven. Delicious and tempting foods lay over. Hungry, the little girl reached out to one of the pies to eat it. But the oven started throwing flames out and the girl couldn't reach the food. You refused to help me when I needed your help. I will not help you now. Go away! The girl continued her journey home. She was very thirsty, hungry and tired. She reached the vineyard hoping she will get some wine. She reached out. But the old vine did not let her touch anything. The girl was forced to leave the vineyard and go on. She now reached the tree. It was full of delicious yummy fruits. She tried to pluck one. Hold it! You didn't want to spoil your hands when I needed your help. You cannot have any of my fruits now. Go away. The girl walked to her home. As she approached the house, the rooster saw her. The mistress has come home covered in blood and dirt. What? 
How is that possible? The woman saw her beloved daughter in her poor state. She turned to her husband. I agree, my daughter didn't earn any money. Your daughter earned everything. But the man was so upset with the woman's terrible behavior towards his daughter that he threw her and her lazy daughter out of his house. Hmm, I get a feeling that being lazy can be fun for now but bad for later. I wonder what made you change your mind, Tofu? Well, let's just say all this work around here. Hey, Tia. What are you doing? I'm meeting the new school principal tomorrow, so just putting my things in order. Oh, you want to impress him, is it? I'm not sure about that, but I don't want to disappoint him either. Maybe you should tell him that you're the best in class. And also tell him that you're a champion swimmer and always come first in all the sports activities. And that you always win all the debates and elocutions. Tofu, I can't do that. Not all of that is true. Yes, but most of it is. Oh boy, you're acting like the miller. The miller? Who is that? Come, let me tell you a story. Rumpelstiltskin Once upon a time, the king called the village miller to the court. The miller went there with a mind to impress the king by any means possible. And so when he was presented in front of the king, he lied that his daughter, who was an excellent spinner, could spin gold from straw. Oh, that's impressive. I order you to bring her to the castle tomorrow and she will spin gold for me. goes back home and tells his daughter what he'd done. Oh no! What have you done, father? I cannot spin gold. I don't think anyone can. I know, and I am sorry, my child, but there is no way out of it now. You must go to the coat tomorrow and spin the best you can. Uh, uh, yes, father. And so the girl went to the coat the next day. Your father tells me that you can spin gold out of straw. In that room there is bale of straw. I give you till tomorrow morning. You must spin it into gold by then or you will lose your life. The miller's daughter had no choice but to do as told. She went into the room and locked herself in. As the night wore on, she didn't know what to do. There was no way she could spin gold. Afraid 
that her father's lie would get her punished by the king, she started crying. Just then, a strange little man appeared in the room. I know what bothers you. <laughs> Do you? Yes, and I can help you. I can spin the straw into gold for you. Oh, oh please do it then. I beg of you. What will you give me in return? Uh, I can give you this necklace of mine. Okay, I will spin for you. And so the little man got to the spinning wheel and started spinning. Within an hour he had converted all the straw into gold. He then took the necklace from the miller's daughter and went out of the window. The next morning, the king came into the room. Is my gold ready? Yes, your majesty. Very good. Now I have another test for you. The castle's barn is full of straw. You will spin all that straw into gold till tomorrow morning. The miller's daughter was taken to the barn. Once alone, she was again surrounded by worries. She didn't know what to do. Soon it was night. Afraid of the king's reaction, she started crying. <laughs> You've got a barn full of straw for yourself today. The girl looked up to see the strange man from the night before. Yes! And the king needs it to be spun into gold by tomorrow morning. Hmm. What will you give me in exchange for it now? I don't have much, but I can I can give you this ring off my finger. The man took the ring from her and started spinning the straw into gold. The next morning, when the king saw the shining gold, his greed increased. Very well, the castle has yet another barn, bigger than this one. If you value your life, you will spin all the straw in it into gold by tomorrow morning. If you succeed, I will marry you and make you the queen. And if you fail, off with your head, I'll have. Once again, the king had left. The girl was taken into another barn. It was bigger than any room that the girl had ever seen and so full of straws. 
She broke down as soon as the king's men had left. She knew she was surely doomed now. When night fell, the little man appeared again. Need my help again, is it? Yes, please. Please spin the straw into gold and save me. Well, I could do that. But what will you give me now? I have nothing left to give you now. You could give it to me when you have it. Yes, I will. Tell me, what can I give you? Your first born child. The girl gasped, but thought, who knows what may happen in the future? It was wiser to save her present. So she agreed. Okay, I will give you my first born child. The strange man happily got to spinning the straw. When the king came in the next morning, the whole barn was full of glistening gold. Happy, he announced his marriage with the miller's daughter. Soon a year passed and the new queen gave birth to a baby boy. The boy was only a day old when the strange little man appeared in her room once again. It is time to settle your debt. The boy is mine. Oh no! Can't you forget this debt? Never. Please. There has to be some way. I will give you gold, fortunes, whatever you want. I only want the boy. But I will give you three days to guess my name. If at the end of the third day you can guess it right, I will leave you and this boy alone. If you can't, the boy will be mine. As soon as the man had left her room, the queen called her trusted soldier and ordered him to gather every name he can find in the kingdom. The soldier set on his mission immediately. The next evening, he came and gave the queen a list of names. When night fell, the little man visited the queen again. Do you know my name? Is it James or Jack? Well, is it Richard or Kenny? She continued with all the names she knew and the names that the soldier had brought back from the village. No, 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 these are not my names. But the little man said no to every name. That is not my name. I leave you now with two days left to find what it is. The queen sent her man out yet again to go to the farthest corners of the kingdom. Till then, she read all the books she could find 
hoping that one of them might give her the man's name. The next night when the man came back, she gave him the names her soldier had brought back and the ones she had collected from the books. Uh, is your name Casper? Sheepshanks? Tommen? None of them. I leave you again. I will come back tomorrow to take away the boy. Because you won't be able to guess my name. Once again, the queen implored the soldier to go out in the kingdom and find her a name. The next evening, before the little man would come, the soldier returned to the queen with some news. My lady, alas, I could not find any new names in the kingdom and its neighbors. However, last night, after I left the castle, I came upon a clearing in the forest where I saw a strange little man danced around the fire. He sang a strange song too. She can search the land, she can search the sky, but a name like mine she will never come by. Rumpelstiltskin, that's me. The moment the queen heard the name, she knew it was the one. She happily waited for the strange man to come visit her. Have you found my name yet? Oh no! I can only wonder what it can be. Is it Apple Tree? Myra? Or maybe Rumpelstiltskin? How can that be? This is some sort of sorcery. How did you know my name? The moment the strange man heard his name, he became very angry. He shouted and stomped around the room. In his anger, he stomped so hard that there became a big hole in the ground and he fell into it towards his death. I wonder if the queen ever told her father about all this. We will never know, but we do know that trying to impress people may get us into big trouble. Oh yes, that lesson I've learned today. And I don't think I will ever forget it. Thanks, Tia, for this wonderful story. For your favorite rhymes, stories, and more, join Kids Heart Family. Subscribe here.